Thank you very much, Scott, and welcome to the exchange. The House has a new speaker, but as the clock is ticking on a potential government shutdown again, will Congress be able to come together to get anything done? The U.S. government will run out of funds in less than three weeks, and another stopgap funding bill is likely. You know, I thought that felt like a little detailed about the machinations of Washington. Welcome to the special edition of the exchange in Power Lunch, everybody. I'm Kelly Evans alongside Tyler Matheson. Uh, welcome, everybody. And as we enter this final 60-minute countdown to the Central Bank's decision on interest rates, a pause once again expected today. But it's Jay Powell's comments that investors will be paying close attention to. Less what they do, more what they say. And as always, we've got team coverage from the stock market to the bond market to the economy and how rising rates will impact the consumer. Plus, the view from Congress, Representative Brad Sherman, Senator John Kennedy, will join us to talk about the legislative challenge ahead and much more this as the clock and once again started ticking towards that potential government showdown a lot of moving pieces for the markets today here's a quick glance at the Dow up 25 points pre-fed the S&P up a third of a percent the Nasdaq up half a percent lower rates have a lot to do with the complex you're seeing so far we had economic data that other than jolts was largely on the dovish end of things the Treasury's refunding announcement same kind of deal we'll dig more into that later look across bond yields where you can see the 10-year note was below 480 now 480 the two-year look just over five, uh, and the 30-year is now below five, 4.985 percent. Well, he was here earlier in the morning, but now he has gone over to the Federal Reserve. Let's kick things off with Steve Leisman. Hi, Steve. Hey, good afternoon, Tyler. Ahead of the Fed meeting, the 10-year yield, as the Governor was saying, falling sharply. Thinking two steps down. The first one came on a somewhat better-than-expected Treasury announcement on refunding the debt and another on the economic data, especially the weak ISM and, of course, a weaker ADP payroll report. Here's how the Treasury responded to all of it. First leg down in the morning with that Treasury refunding, where they leaned a little bit more towards the shorter end of the coupons and also suggested that there's only one more quarter of increases in coupons to come. And then the other leg down came at 10 o'clock with the ISMs coming out and some of the other data. But here's how we go into the meeting. Here's the setup. The Probability for rate hikes in upcoming meetings, of course, this one is zero, and for upcoming meetings is very, very slim, just 20 percent for December and around 30 percent for January. But that's a big change from the last meeting when there was roughly an even chance of a December hike. Now you can see, as we, as we saw, just 21 percent down from 46 percent. So the big question for Powell is, to two pauses, assuming we get one now, equal to hold. Possible answers from Powell that could affect the market. He says, yes, the Fed is on an extended hold, which he's not going to say, but if he did, that'd be a big rallying point. More likely, he says, maybe meetings are live, but we continue to be in a wait and see mode. Then there's the idea of the most hawkish answer. He'll say, no, the committee continues to forecast a second hike. The Fed needs to do more. Don't expect that. Looking more for the maybe, keeping the Fed on edge. I think there's a chance Fed Chair Powell tries to redirect the market towards the greater possibility of another hike. The market may be close to deciding that, hey, whatever Powell says, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. And Steve, to what extent is all of this overshadowed by what's happening on the supply side of things with bond yields? With the Treasury's announcement this morning, and really its announcements going back to Monday, a little bit lighter issuance than expected, and that's being taken as a positive. It is interesting. Um, I don't remember a time when Treasury issuance you know, basically was more important than what the Fed may or may not say. You remember in August with that announcement, it seriously moved the market uh, coming after the Fitch downgrade and then the surprise on the coupons on, on the long end of the Treasury market. And then again, coming uh, this morning a little bit lighter. And also the idea, Kelly, that they're not going to go so much further in terms of increasing coupons into the third quarter. So uh, th there are the, the bullet points there. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter on that 112 in terms of the total uh, amount that's going to come to auction. But I think the more important point was the idea that there's only one more quarter of increases left. We'll see if they hold to that. But you're right. The market is very focused on these numbers from here on out. I don't think they go away. All right, Steve, for now, thank you. We'll see you soon. Our Steve Leisman.